Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a study on, you know, just our, our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, what it meant for us as a Christian, of course, to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, all your sins washed away and forgiven. Once saved, always saved. Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth to salvation that Jesus Christ is Lord and God. We're going to look at some of those passages that speak to his death, burial, and resurrection, and well, as what it means you know, to us in terms of our redemption, um, our salvation. And uh, we'll take a look at some verses. We're going to jump around quite a bit. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thumbs up. Love to have you join me. Um, taking a look at the book of Matthew. I had, had a talk with a friend yesterday, and, and we were discussing some of this stuff. And um, I'll try to answer his question a little bit, too, that he had a little thir more thoroughly today as well. All right, so if we go to chapter 26 and... Is that the right chapter? Apologize. Chapter 27. And we'll start at verse 33. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is said to be the place of the skull. So Golgotha is Latin for Calvaria or Calvary. And um, both both uh, words mean bear skull, essentially. Um they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gale, and when he tasted thereof, he would not drink. This is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, of course. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Of course, that's in reference to the crucifixion um, and what they did with his, with his clothes. Verse 36, and sitting down, they watched him there. 37, and said over his head, his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Verse 38, then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the, on the left. Verse 39, and they that passed by reveled him, wagging their heads and saying, thou that destroyeth the temple and buildeth it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. So, of course, everyone wanted him to be a military dictator, leadership, and conquer the Romans and come down from the cross and bring in the kingdom. Of course, they denied him, and that's why he's on this cross. And so everyone's saying, hey, save yourselves. Um, if you go over to verse 45, now from the sixth hour there, was darkness over all the land. From the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. So that's from noon to three o'clock in, in, in the time the in the time of um, Jerusalem. And there was darkness, you know, over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathanini, which is to say in English, my God, my God, why hast thou, you know, forsaken me? And this is one of the seven sayings on the cross, and I'm going to do a different study on that. But, you know, really what happened here is um, it's a reference to Psalms uh, 22 um, as well um, to fulfill what King David said in Psalms 22. If we go over there, um, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. That's uh, Matthew 20, 20, Matthew 22, uh, excuse me, Psalms 22, verse 1, that David, so he fulfilled by the scripture. But I also believe Jesus was saying, you know, hey, I didn't really deserve to die. The Jews rejected me. Um, you know, and I'm sure he's got some, you know, some humanly bodily grief at that moment. And uh, it's a beautiful saying to fulfill scripture indeed in Psalms 22, uh, verses, uh, you know, verse 1. And you know, we, of course, he's, people think that he's calling for Elias to come help him. That's not the case. And um, verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So he dies. And uh, again, some of the most amazing things occur right after this. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So you had full boulders and rocks in an earthquake. 
you know, falling and, and, and moving and coming out of the ground. You have the, the, whole, the most holy place of the temple of Jerusalem divided from the holy place. So the most holy place is where the priest can go in the, and it's separated by a veil. And that veil, you know, rent, it, it ripped without hands. And uh, verse 52, and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Of course, we know this is some of the Old Testament saints that Christ was now going to take to heaven. And of course, they did walk the holy city and did resurrect and did appear to many. And verse 54, now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things which were done, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Um and so it's a powerful story. It's one. It's probably one of the the most uh, crazy events and, and awesome events that ever heard occurred in the Bible. Of course, for us, it means a lot in terms of you know our salvation. Let's take a look at Psalms twenty-two and verse sixteen. Um, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Speaking of again. A long time before Jesus was crucified, speaking of him being put on that cross. Uh, and why was he on the cross? We did talk about it real quick, but if we go over to John uh, chapter 1, verse 11, uh, it's pretty pretty easy to see. Um, and I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to turn to the, the verse, but you can. Uh, Jesus was denied by his own, um, is what it truly, you know, truly says. Um, Let's go to John 8 um, real quick. John chapter 8, 26 through 30. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understand not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus said unto them, When he lifted up the Son of Man... Then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. So, you know, Christ is lifted up um, is very important. It's a very important thing. It's God being revealed. It's us being redeemed. It's, you know, in verse 28, if we read that, uh, he's God's spokesman. In verse 30, many believed after he spoke those words, of course, here in, uh, in John. And... You know, that forgiveness is a free gift. When Jesus is lifted up, we're able to be forgiven, um, truly, of what we don't deserve to be forgiven of. Let's go, if you're in the chapter, John, just go back a few um, few pages to John th uh, chapter 3. And, of course, most people know, you know, John 3, you know, 16 and, and 15 through 17 are famous verses. But let's take a look at... Um, Verse 13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. A lot of um, words are removed from this passage from other Bibles. Um, verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so that's a reference back to Numbers 21, 8, and 9, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And... Um, Jesus bore our sins to take away our sins, and he actually turned sin, in, sin turned into sin itself to have a punishment for sin of himself when he drank that cup um, of wrath. And his body, you know, obviously took the place of us, of us, in, in terms of a lost sinner in hell. Amen. Um, and like Moses, the Son of Man be lifted up. So again, there's an, there's that lifting up that's very important. If we go back to Numbers. 21 um, verses 8 and 9 and the Lord said unto Moses make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it up on a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man when he beheld the serpent he lived um Christ applies, you know, this passage I just read to himself. It, he, you know, it is a serpent because the author of sin is the cherub Satan, who is a serpent. 
to any and Jesus Christ had to bear those sins for us uh, to pay for your sins. He be, he he had to become sin for us essentially. Second Corinthians uh, five twenty one shows that. So you know again going back to Moses even prophesizing about the death of Jesus Christ and you know he, Jesus is our redeemer and this is so very important for us as Christians today to have understanding. Of course the famous verses. Um, Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came for sinners. He didn't come for the self-righteous. He didn't come for the Pharisees or the Sadducees. He came for you as a sinner. Accept the free gift today. Um, you know, it's very, very beautiful. Take a, take a look at Second Corinthians 5. 21 for he hath made him to be sin for us so so jesus became sin for us when he died on that cross um you know he took he he became sin who who know he who knew no sin so jesus was perfect when he walked he did not sin that he that we might be made righteous of god in him i cannot speak today i apologize so that we can be righteous in us of God in him. So our righteousness, right, is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. And once we believe in him, we become part of the body of Christ, the future bride of the Christ at the wedding supper of the lamb. I know that's complicated, um, you know, to think about that. Um, it's a deep, it's a deep doctrine essentially. And, um, you know, Christ is, um, you know, vicarious atonement should be memorized. You know, you should memorize this verse and it shows that God was responsible. If, if, a lot of people will say, well, did God create sin? Well, if God was responsible for sin, now he does not commit sin. And yes, he created sin, right? The idea of sin and everything comes from him. And it entered into the world, which it did through Satan and, and through the fall of Adam and Eve. He did everything in his power to rectify it through the death, uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ, his son and God himself, a part of the Trinity. And so he made himself uh, a sacrifice for our for our self righteousness. He became man to go through what we go through, to walk, but he did it perfectly. And you know, he made payment in hell for you and for me, so we don't have to accept uh, a fire, a fire, a lake of fire, a hell. We can be reconciled in one with God. It's a beautiful story of of, of coming to the Lord, he, he invites all to come. The, you know, those that call out to the Lord, he will show the way. And um, if you don't accept the free gift, right? And, you know, you usually do that out of, of self-righteousness and, and, and foolishness, and you believe you don't need God. Um, but you don't need to do any works. You don't need to do anything to be, to be forgiven. God has done it all on that cross with the blood shed and the atonement, it's available for anybody. So, and it, he came for sinners. So I'm, I'm asking you in these final days, you know, make, make Jesus Christ's death and burial and resurrection and his blood to, as the atonement to forgive you for your sins, to clean the blood. Um, that blood was used in the old Testament, uh, you know, in terms of lambs or goats that were innocent animals to cleanse. And, and that pattern continued, but Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. It's why, we saw there in um, Matthew 27 when the Old Testament saints were able to come out of paradise is because the blood of Jesus Christ was then the perfect atonement for their sins and they were able, able to go to heaven. He wants you to go to heaven as well. Accept the free gift today. God bless each and every one of you and have a great day.